Welcome to the Chimney and Fireplace Success Network, a weekly broadcast sponsored by CVC Success Group, hosted each week by industry speaker, coach, author, and educator, Jerry Eisenhower. Our presentations are produced to assist business owners and managers in turning their business dreams into their business realities. And now, here is your host, Jerry Eisenhower. Well, good morning, good afternoon, whatever time of day it is where you're listening in with us. And this is the CBC Tips and Tactics. And today, you know, I got a couple members of the team on here because we wanted to share with you what each of us thinks are things that can make you successful. What's the tips? What's the tactics that you that we can share with you today? So we appreciate you being on with us. So Cheryl, let's start out with you. What got you've been doing a lot of interviews the last couple of days, pretty intensive in your interview process that you do for a lot of clients. So you probably picked up some tips and tactics. I know you had like a 200 applicants for one job this week. What would you share with the people listening to us today? Basically, stay ahead of things. Uh, don't let them get behind. Uh, you have to you have to go thing at things forward. A lot of people tend to push things off that don't seem important. But you know, my biggest tip to anybody is pick the one most important thing that will make the day better and do it first. And that makes all the rest of it kind of slide by. So that kind of follows the book that Gary Keller printed, The One Thing, you know, where you're concentrating on that one thing. So do you think that people get just so scattered because they're trying to accomplish too many things at one time? They do. And then they start pushing the really some of the important ones to the bottom because they're the huge projects. It's like, OK, I've got my checklist. Let's get rid of all the little stuff. But then you're left at the end of the day with still the most important thing that you did. Then the procrastination kicks in. And I think that's a huge problem with everybody's procrastination a lot of times. But if you've got only the major stuff left that you're procrastinating about, you're farther behind the next day than you were today. That's it. So what about you, Brandy? What do you see? What would you share with people that you may have learned in the last week from dealing with our client base and with the real world and in your position at Blues Brothers? What would you tell people that they got to stick down to if they're going to be successful? How much time do we have? When you told me what the topic was, I like mind mapped a bunch of different. We got it. We got it. With all the value you got to share, you take as much time as you want. All right. Um, I guess the first thing I would say is commitment, not motivation. Um, and this kind of goes back to, I was thinking about this morning. Um, it was one degrees, negative, I think 12 wind chill here in Kansas City. And my routine is to get out of bed at four and go to the gym. And I did not want to get out of bed. I knew it was so cold out there. Um, so I did not have that motivation. There was the motivation was not there, but what I did have was the commitment. And so motivation is going to always wax and wane. So get rid of it and just commit to what you're going to do. Um, don't be afraid to fail. So in business, in life, no matter what it is, you are going to mess up. You are going to make mistakes. You are going to take chances on projects and they're not going to work out. And don't be afraid of that because that's what actually makes us better. You know, Jerry, I tell our clients all the time, I'm only able to coach because I've already done everything wrong and I'm teaching you how to not do that. Um, go, go above and beyond. So especially in the workplace, um, I remember when I used to work at the hospital, I would get in before anybody else in the morning and get things prepped. And I was often the last to leave. And that was seen by the higher ups. And so just always be willing to go above and beyond. Don't be that person, especially if you're a CSR that's sitting at your desk and there's downtime. Don't be that person that's looking on the internet or looking at your phone. Go and ask, how can I help? Do you have a project I can work on? Um, communication. So when I ask clients, you know, what's their biggest struggle? Hands down, they all say communication. And so a lot of us do not know how to communicate properly and we under communicate. I always like to say there's no such thing as over communication. Have grit and perseverance. So I always tell my daughter, she's 14 and she has a learning disability and she struggles in school, 
but her teachers love her and she gets straight A's because she has that grit and that perseverance. She knows she struggles. She knows she has to work 10 times harder, study five times harder on a test than any of her peers, but she does it because she has that perseverance. Um, I wrote down volunteer, and this again can be for um, work or for home, but getting out in the community and volunteering. This is something that you can put on your resume that gets noticed when you're applying for positions. And this is something that it's going to make you feel better about yourself. And it's going to make you forget about whatever problems you have at work or whatever problems you have at home. Um, set boundaries. So I try to teach people, you know, some of them have like thousands and thousands of emails. And so I try to teach them to maybe only check email three times a day, once in the morning, once in the afternoon, and once in the evening. And if you're at work, set that time aside, put a sign on the door that says, do not interrupt. This is, you know, more for the managers and owners and set that boundary that you can't be interrupted right now. You are doing that task and that's your boundary. With that goes along though, make sure that you leave time for family time. You never talk to a dying person and they say that they wish they would have worked more or they wish they would have made a lot more money to leave behind because all you're taking out of there is, is your body um, and not even that. So make time for family and that goes along with setting those boundaries too. Don't let your customers call you at 11 o'clock at night. We used to have on Google turned on where the customers could um, submit to us at any time of night or day. And a lot of them seem to do it at like 11 o'clock at night or three in the morning um, where they could ask questions, where they could ask how much a cleaning is, et cetera. And we just set the boundary that we turned that off because I don't wanna be answering those things at eight o'clock at night when it's time to spend time with my kiddos. Um, work when you have the most energy. So you can probably tell that my most energy comes in the morning. If you talk to me at six, seven o'clock tonight, it's, it's not there. I'm checked out. Um, so I have to purposely get into the office early and do everything very early in the morning when I have that most energy. Kind of going back to what um, Cheryl said, do the thing that you hate first. So I, I always talk with everybody and our clients about making a, a list. And so these are the notepads I like because you can write down tons of things. You can date it. Um, so make a list for your day and whatever's on there that you hate the most, do it in that order backwards. That's going to prevent that procrastination. And two or three hours when you've done all the things you hate and it's just the things that are fine to do, you're going to have a much better day. Make sure that you set goals for yourself. Um, it's great if you can set them, let your manager know them, um, owner, and have them participate in them, but set goals. And these, again, can be for personal or home, but you have to have something to reach to. We're not robots. We don't want to be just going through our day. Uh, mentor and be a mentor. So the NCSG has rolled out the mentorship program. Um, sign up for it and be a mentor. And you'll talk to people that have only been in the business for six months, a year, and they're like, well, I can't be a mentor. I don't know anything. Not true. You, all, you have something to give. I know that there's something that everybody can learn from you. That's the great thing I love about coaching, Jerry. Everybody thinks that I'm giving information. I'm learning so much from our clients. And that's what I love about it. I have more. Do you want me to keep going or do you want to keep going? I'm loving this. <laughs> I just made this huge list. But let's put let's do this. Ladies and gentlemen, so you're aware. Brandy, <laughs> tell them how long ago I told you we're going live. Um, about 20 minutes before we went live. Correct. Now, so this is not a deep couple days thoughts that she's bringing out to you. This is what she's assembled in 20 minutes. Yeah, I, just, I just like mind mapped it. I just wrote it out. I added a couple when Cheryl was talking because they made me think of others. Um, so, okay. So if we're going to keep going, look at the glass half full, not half empty. That's never going to get you anywhere in life. No matter how bad the situation is, you can make lemonade out of it, as they say. Um, sometimes we'll be having a bad day here. Maybe we've had a customer call in that was just grumpy. Um, maybe a technician had a problem on the job. And uh, we could take that and make it to where our day is horrible from that. Or we could say, you know what? Nobody got hurt today. Nobody fell off a roof. Nobody was in an accident. It was a great day. Um, work harder than your peers. And that goes back along with what we were talking about, you know, coming in early, staying late. Um, make sure that you're the one doing a lot of the work and that that's being seen. That is going to pay off in the end. Now, with that, I have take vacations. 
because you don't want to be the person that works 365 days a year and never takes a break. That's going to get you a heart attack. Jerry, you know about that. Um, I know, hey, I know heart attack, okay? <laughs> so make sure that you take vacations and you do build in that time off. Um, so then the others that I have, I have exercise, which of course I'm a big believer in Jerry, you have really got on the exercise train now since having your heart attack. Um, Check this out. Right <laughs> beside my desk. Okay. How many pounds is it? That's an eight pound dumbbell and a dumbbell is the right word for me. Okay. <laughs> exercise is going to make you feel better. Again, no one, I haven't met anybody that's like, I love to exercise. I can't wait to go out and run 26 miles. They love the feeling that they get from exercise and they love how they feel after. So work that in. And that can be as simple as on your lunch break, walking around the office and doing lunges with those dumbbells that Jerry has. Um, it doesn't have to be anything elaborate. When it's a nice day, getting out on your lunch break and taking a walk. Um, along with that, decrease your caffeine. So I'm drinking tea right now. Um, caffeine can really mess with you. I'm, I, I love coffee. I'm all for having a cup in the morning, but if you're one of those people that are drinking caffeine throughout the day, that's going to mess with your sleep and believe it or not, it's going to mess with your endocrine system. So try to cut down your caffeine if you're a huge caffeine addict. Um, I think we already talked about setting goals, unplug. So make sure that you have a time during the day where that phone is put away, that computer is turned off um, and you, you are unplugged. And again, this can look like at work on your on your lunch break, you can just take a little nap if you have an office. Power naps are also a secret of a lot of very successful people. And a power nap is just a 15 to 20 minute close your eyes. You might fall asleep, you might not, but you're gonna wake up and you're gonna be refreshed and you're gonna be ready to go. Eating right, again, Jerry, we've talked a lot about this since your heart attack. Nobody's Nobody can think and do well throughout their day if they're high on sugar. I love sugar. If there's candy in this office, it has to be hidden from me because I would just eat, eat it all. But I know then that I just feel like crap and my body just wants more and more sugar. So make sure that you're eating right and feeding your body. Um, along with that goes taking your vitamins. Cheryl, I know you and I both take a lot of vitamins. Um, so making sure that you're doing that, you know, they've proven with um, COVID, some of the studies have showed that vitamin D is very effective against it vitamin C. So make sure that you're getting those nutrients for your body. I don't know if I said sleep yet, but I am a, I, I love sleep. I was the kid in kindergarten when they would say it's nap time and everybody was complaining. I, is, I was already on my mat and had been asleep for 10 minutes. I was mad when they woke us up. Get at least seven to eight hours of sleep. Don't be the person that works on four hours. There, I know you're out there. I know you're saying, well, I feel great on four hours. You may feel great, but what's happening inside your body is not great. So get seven to eight hours. If you can get more, great. I prefer nine. Read books. We talk about this a lot. The most successful people are reading books. I think I have a copy back here. Uh, I might have taken it home of your book, Jerry, which is a great one to read. Um, but you have to be constantly filling your brain on your own with education. That can come through books. It can come through podcasts. Constantly be learning and improving yourself. And I think, believe it or not, I'm looking at my list, Jerry. I think that was when I that that was all that I had. Okay, so okay, you know, I, I apologize. Keep clean. I'm sorry. I had one more. Keep clean. And what I mean by that is, don't have your office to where you've got stacks and stacks of piles. I know people say they work well. They know where things are at, um, but. I promise you, if you keep it more tidy and organized, you're actually going to have more energy. That was my last one, I promise. Okay, so you know, Brandy, you just wrote that book I've been trying to get you to write. <laughs> Once we get done, I'm going to tell you to send this to my editor. And you, I think you just wrote your first book. What do you think, Cheryl? I've been on her to write a book. I'm, I'm impressed. I think she should. I think it should do that because the thing is... Uh, a lot of times if we could just give Brandy first lead, you and I could just sit here and watch. That's it. So if you're watching us right now, if you agree that Brandy needs to write a book, put it in the comments I like because I've been pushing her on this for years. It was a hard time to get her started doing videos and she has come out of that shell. And there you go. Brandy, please write the book. Okay, there's your first request. Okay, other people join in here. Tell her she needs to write that book. She got so much information to share. So here's mine. Here's here's the thought process. Brandy, Cheryl, do you agree that we talk to clients all the time 
that are overwhelmed. Do y'all see that? Yes. Always. And what happens is they go off in all these different directions, all these different tangents, and they never get it accomplished. And, you know, I deal with clients with all types of personalities. And one of, one of the clients that I deal with that really moves very rapidly sent me a list the other day. And it was all, Cheryl, it was all the holes in its business. Can you imagine this list, Brandy? If you wrote the holes down in Blues Brothers on a list and you listed all those holes, all those fumbles, how many fumb how many things would you list? I mean, I think everybody would have quite a few. The the goal though would be to be working on those and have less and less each week. But right. they made the first step. They now have admitted their holes. Right. So this is what we had our coaching conversation on. And I told him what you've got to do is you've got to prioritize what is the biggest hole that you're falling into. And Brandy, you know, like we had joint clients, you and I have had conversations this week. And in fact, there's one that my, you, myself and Cheryl, we had a joint conversation this week about a hole in their system. And sometimes, and that's what you got to recognize and come up with that strategy. Earlier this week, you and I had what I'm what I called a Kaizen meeting, which is where we pulled the management team together at a company and we went through the problem that they had, and then we had to keep them focused that we were meeting to come up with a resolution to that. And since that meeting, the person who took ownership of that task is now coming up with a really neat SOP of how to get there. But, you, you know, it's got to be concentrated. Somebody's got to have ownership of that role. But that's what you've got to do. you got to analyze what your problems are. you got to analyze what's going on in your business. And from that point, you've then got to develop the strategies to come out of that hole. You know, one of the great guys that I really admire, and Brandy, you recently got the opportunity to listen to him. You were actually a customer of this company, who is Tommy Mello at A1 Garage Doors. And I got Tommy to come in and he talked to our client base in a group coaching call. And if you remember, one of the things that Tommy did is he shared about, just like you did, about all the failures you've had and where you keep coming up and learning from that, from that standpoint. You know, it's like you, you bring up my heart attack. That was a recent failure and that was chaos in my life. And I've got to change a lot of my habits. And the neat thing I've got, I've got these two ladies here that are behind me. It's like earlier, Brandy sent me a note, said she wanted she wanted to check out my exercise program. She wanted to know about my food program. In fact, she questioned a while ago, what's in that glass you're drinking, Jerry? Okay. So when you go there, but that's because they care about me. And that's what you've got to do if you're going to go and be that success. Those are the tips and tactics that is there. So Cheryl, what's your thoughts? Anything you'd like to add to this? I just want to see people move forward. Always look in the mirror in front of you or the window. Never look in the mirror and look back. We all tend to look back at the things we've already done. And the bad part is we're so stressed out. We make the same decisions again. Look forward, move in the right direction. I think that to me is one of the biggest tips that anybody ever needs to do. Quit looking backwards. Okay. And Brandy, what about you? Well, I'm a very visual person. So when you were explaining about the holes, I'm like picturing a boat and plugging up those holes. And I think what happens to a lot of us, myself included, I'm guilty as well, is we go through our day and we're tired and we're just trying to get the essentials done. And we've got so much else on our plate and we're putting out fires over here that we know those holes exist, but we don't devote any time to making them better. So my advice would be, I love that that person wrote down their holes write them all down and work on one or two a day. Again, you're not going to feel like it. The motivation may not be there, but commit to it. That's it. And that's what you got to do. And one last thing that I want to share with you is if you're in business, you've got to set up a business to what you want. 
And I see often people will be looking at other people's businesses and they will, they'll, you know, they want to get there. They want to be that person. But what you've got to do, and Brandy, I think you're an excellent example of you and Jeremy set what you wanted the size of Blues Brothers to be. And there were definite reasons of why you did not want to exceed that size. And that's what a lot of times I see people that have, they're doing podcasts and they're telling you, you got to scale, you got to grow, you got to grow. Well, that's great if that's what you want to do, but never set your business dreams or your personal dreams. It's just like vacations. If I ask Brandy, where's one of your favorite places to go on vacation? She's going to tell me San Diego, California. Would that be correct, Brandy? Absolutely. Now, for me, I have no desire to go to San Diego. I'm not really crazy about Southern California. I, I'm going to pick a Caribbean island to go to. Okay, so we're different things, so different ways. And that's what you got to do in your life. So, Cheryl, what's your thoughts on that? Would you agree with that? I agree totally. It's just the thing is everybody needs to, like Brandy said, sit back, prepare, and go in the right direction. Because we're all we're all guilty. We are all guilty of doing all of these. All three of us are sitting here telling you things to do that we know ourselves that we're guilty of but we we keep working at it day after day so and i think that's why we all can coach we're not perfect and like brandy said we've done made the mistakes so let's that's why we try to help other people not make the same ones at least fantastic so brandy what's your part in wisdom to the world that's watching and listening to us today and on the replays well, if you're watching and listening, I would just say, write down three things right now, three holes that you want to work on. And within the next hour or so, start working on at least one of those holes, no matter what comes up, commit to it. Okay. So if you, if we can help you in any way through our coaching and our training services, you're seeing an email address coming across the bottom of your screen. You'd like to talk to one of us. We'll be glad to set up a phone call. There's no charge for that call. So we can get to know you. You can get to know us. We've got a lot of subject matter experts here and we bring a lot of expertise to the table. And I can tell you that our goal is to take every client to the destination that they want. We don't set that destination, do we, Brandy? Absolutely not. And I think that's the thing that I love most about this um, coaching group. Yeah, it, it really is. We're, you are our concerns. So appreciate you joining us today for our tips and tactics. Tune in next time. Uh, usually I do these on Wednesday, but I moved it around a little bit this week. So just watch when they come out. Feel free to share this on your social media if you would care to do that. We'd love to get our words out to other people. And with that, we're out of here. We'll see you on our next uh, broadcast of the CBC Tips and Tactics. Thanks for joining us here each week at the Chimney and Fireplace Success Network, sponsored by CVC Success Group, providing you the coaching and educational outreach services you need to move to your dream destination in business and in life.